GPT-4 is here, TypeScript 5.0 is out now, Curl is turning 25, and a pick of the week that puts the GPT into Clippy. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. My shirt this week is from Jason Kotke, whose kotke.org is celebrating its 25th anniversary this week. And look, even if you've never been to kotke.org, You've been influenced by its style. Jason arguably invented the idea of the link blog. He definitively invented the permalink paradigm and everything from BuzzFeed to Tumblr owes something to his work. So here's to 25 more years. All right, I know I are all here. Let's talk about GPT-4. So the big news this week is GPT-4, the latest version of the OpenAI GPT series. And this is a multi-model, large language model that can uh, accept text or visual inputs, and its output is in text. And on the surface, GPT-4 might not seem like it's that big of a deal because it uses the same data set as GPT-3.5, and some of the results can seem only subtly different. But the potential behind GPT-4, especially with the image input, is really fantastic. Additionally, GPT-4 can access up to 32,000 tokens, which is the equivalent of like 50 pages of text, which means that the stuff that you can ingest and that it can output can be way more detailed or complex. If you use Bing Chat or ChatGPT+, you can access GPT-4 now. API access is on a waitlist for now, but I've got a link um, in the show notes down below, not just the announcement post, but also OpenAI's developer live stream where they showed off some of the stuff that you can do with GPT-4. The coolest demo had to be the ability to turn a photograph of a hand-drawn website into an actual website, complete with you know HTML, JavaScript, CSS. So literally, we just said to output the HTML from that picture, and here we go. Actual working JavaScript, filled in the jokes. For comparison, this was the original of our mock-up. And so there you go, going from hand-drawn, beautiful art, if I do say so myself, to working website. Amazing. I've also got a link to a terrific Twitter thread from um, Linus Ekenstam, who has been curating different GPT-4 implementations, some that were released just hours after the announcement. There's already some really great stuff being created and stuff that's integrating GPT-4 into existing products. This is all super exciting. So I've got links to all this stuff in the show notes and the description down below. Moving on to some GitHub news, GitHub Galaxy is back, baby! So you can join us virtually on March 28th through the 31st for GitHub Galaxy, which is our global enterprise event focused on improving efficiency, security, and developer productivity. I just got uh, back spending the last week at um, Scale, uh, followed by DevOps Days Salt Lake City, and I've had a lot of conversations with some of our enterprise customers or would-be customers. And if you're looking um, how to make your organization's developer experience better or more productive, GitHub Galaxy is an event that you're definitely going to want to check out. As I said, it's taking place uh, March 28th through the 31st, and it's free. So you can go to galaxy.github.com for more details, and I've got that linked in the show notes and the description down below too. Speaking of GitHub, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the README Project team for publishing their first video in a new coding accessibility series. And this episode introduces you to Becky Tyler, who's an incredible woman who has quadriplegic cerebral palsy, and she interacts and controls her computer using her eyes. Hi guys, this is our gaze girl, also known as Becky. I would like to show you my world. This is how I build things. I love it. I use adaptive technology practically all of the time as it is the door to my independence. I hope that people can see that with emerging technologies and a willingness of attitude from those in positions of authority, that so much could be possible in the future, and a truly inclusive world could be a reality for disabled people like me. Becky is incredible, and so is this new series, and I've got that link down below. It's really, really inspiring to see what people of all types can accomplish. I love it. 
and some project update news, TypeScript 5.0 is now available. And this release has been in the works for um, several months or maybe even longer than that, but it's a longer release cycle. And it's gonna bring some really great features, including restructuring the code base to use ECMAScript modules, and there's a new emit target. Um, I've got a link to a blog post from Daniel and Jake on the TypeScript team uh, that walks through that migration to modules um, uh, process, and it's a really interesting read. TypeScript 5.0 also now supports decorators, and that uh, will be coming to ECMAScript soon. I know that this is something that's gonna make a lot of Angular fans really happy, and the rest of us too. And I've got links down below to the announcement post, the TypeScript website, and of course the GitHub repo. I also wanna give a shout out to the team behind Zed, which is a new text editor that launched in beta this week. Zed is from the same team members behind Atom, which is GitHub's dearly departed text editor. Zed is only available for macOS right now, but the support for other platforms is in the works. It's also not open source right now, but the plan of the team says is to open source most of the core editor and its UI libraries. Look, I love a good text editor, and so I want to give you know props to the Zed team. And I've got links down below for their website um, and uh, their GitHub discussions page, as well as documentation. And now it's time for my GitHub project spotlight. So this week, I thought that it was only fitting to celebrate the Curl project, which will be having its 25th birthday party on Zoom on March 20th, 2023. Now, Curl, if you aren't familiar, is a command line tool and library for transferring data with URLs. It's been around, as I said, 25 years, and in that time, it has been used in basically every single internet-connected device on the planet. Your car, your phone, your TV, maybe even your fridge, all have curl on it. So cheers to Daniel Stenberg and the curl contributors and developers to 25 years of excellent work. Also, if you benefit from curl, might I recommend donating to Daniel using GitHub sponsors? I've got links to the GitHub repo um, website and um, curl founder and lead developer Daniel Stenberg's GitHub sponsors page down below. This is great stuff. And now it's time for my pick of the week. All right. So if you've watched this show for some time or if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I unironically love Clippy, Microsoft's original chatbot. Now look, Clippy got a bad rap, but now it might finally be his time to shine thanks to some ingenuity and a little bit of a GPT. David Pakman created a ChatGPT powered Clippy using a Raspberry Pi 3, a screen, a 3D printer, he's got some other components involved, and the results are just terrific. And my pal Jim Bennett talked to David about how he built Clippy GPT, and uh, they show off how it works and how you can do something similar on the latest episode of Jim's show, Let's Get Personal, on the Microsoft Developer YouTube channel. I saw all the memes online about, hey, you know, is, is ChatGPT PT actually Clippy. Mm -hmm. How can I help? <laughs> Are you the same as ChatGPT? No, we are not the same as ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the memes say it is. ChatGPT yeah. is basically Clippy under the underhood, but Clippy says no. No. Though I did ask it one time if it worked with uh, ChatGPT, and it said that uh, no, because Clippy was retired. So, I mean, it's just great because, I mean, it's amazing how much personality is actually in the large language models that uh, ChatGPT is leveraging. This is such a fun project, and I'm so happy that David did this and then documented it for all of us. It's really, really fun, really cute. What do you think of Clippy GPT? Let me know that or comment on any of our other stories in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of GPT-4 and all that stuff. That's gonna do it for me this week. If you liked this episode, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube and subscribe to GitHub's YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.